Hello, my dear students. Today, inshallah, we're going to start chapter 8, which is about planning and goal setting. First, we're going to uh, talk about the definition of planning. Uh, planning, as we said before, is one of the four functions of managers, which are uh, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So, uh, when we uh, talk about the definition of planning, we have to say that it is one of the management functions. Uh, planning involves uh, first setting the goals. A manager must set what are his or her goals, then establish the strategies for how to achieve those goals, and then put the plan which shows the details of uh, how to integrate and to coordinate the activities of the employees inside the organization uh, so that they can achieve those goals. Uh, in order for uh, the plan to be formal, it has to be specific. Uh, it has to be specified uh, or written specifically for uh, one of the goals and it has to be uh, set by a time frame. Uh, also, it has to be written and communicated to all people who are uh, required to uh, work on it or all the people who are interested to, and, uh, to know uh, what are our plan inside the organization. Here we have uh, to uh, answer that question, which is, why do managers plan? Uh, managers actually plan for four uh, main reasons. The first is that planning provides direction for the uh, people inside the organization. Uh, when they have a plan, uh, we are sure that everyone inside the organization is working towards the same direction. So uh, no one is working in the wrong direction. We are all uh, working towards achievement of the goals of the organization. Second, it reduces uncertainty. No one is working and not sure that his or her work will not lead them towards our goals. We are now sure that we are working on the correct way. We are moving towards our goals. Third, it minimizes waste and redundancy. When we have a plan, so we are divided and everyone uh, inside the organization knows his or her job so that no waste, no duplication on the work, no redundancy. Uh, so everyone knows exactly what they are supposed to do. Fourth, it established the goals and standards for controlling. When you want to control people inside the organization, you have to set a plan and uh, put with the plan uh, a time frame. And according to that plan and the time frame, you can control every now and then. Look at the people. Did they achieve what they are required to do? Uh, did they, did they um, abide to the uh, requirement uh, written in the plan uh, at that time? If they are working according to the plan, so they are doing a great job. If they are not working according to the plan, so there is something wrong. So you cannot do a control without having a plan in your hand. The relationship between planning and performance is a positive relationship. Uh, when you have a formal plan, uh, it is uh, associated with positive financial results. So what managers um, are concerned with having a, a good formal plan so that if they have a good formal plan, it will lead to having positive financial results. But do you think that? Always, if you have a good formal plan, this will lead to a positive financial results. Move with me to the second point. The quality of the planning implementation is more important than the extent of it, which means I have to have a good plan. The quality of the plan is very important. Not only the quality of the plan, but also the quality of how we're going to implement that plan. So we have to have a good plan. We have to implement it correctly. And then... After that, this is what is more important than to have a long plan. So if you have a short plan with a good quality and you implement it correctly, this is better for the organization than to have a good, a long plan that is not good or a long plan that is good but not implemented properly. So what is more important is the quality of the plan and how you are going to implement it than the extent. Extent of it means the duration of the plan. So... If you have a good plan and you implement it very well, are you sure that you are going to have a positive results? To answer this question, go to the third point. 
there are external factors that can reduce the impact of planning on performance. Sometimes you have a good plan and you implement it very well, but you find the performance is not well. What happened at that time? There are some external factors that affected the relationship between quality of the plan and the performance. So external factors are the factors outside the organization which can affect its performance. So sometimes we have a good plan, we implement it very well, but the performance is not well. So these, the, the result is according to external factors which are, which are outside our hands. Uh, the planning performance relationship is influenced by the time frame. If you have a very long uh, plan, uh, this will affect the relationship between planning and performance. So it's better to have short to medium uh, term plans. And then after that, you can have a long term plan, but the long term plan can be divided or subdivided into short and medium term plans. So let's move to the uh, definition of goals and plans. What is meant by goals? Goals are the desired or outcomes or targets that you want to achieve. Plans are the uh, document that shows how you are going to achieve your goals or how these goals are going to be met. So the target that you want to achieve, this is your goal. The document that will tell you how you are going to achieve that target, this is the plan. Here we have uh, the types of goals and the types of plan. Don't confuse between them. Uh, types of goals are four. The types of plans are eight. So let's start with the types of goals. Uh, the first uh, type of goal is the financial goals. These are all the goals related to the financial performance of the organization. For example, if I tell you my goal is to achieve a monthly income of 50,000 uh, Egyptian pounds. This is a financial goal because it is related to the financial performance of the organization. The second type is called strategic goals. It, it is related to all other areas of the organization rather than the, rather than the financial goals. Uh, any other areas of the organization performance, for example, when I said that uh, uh, my goal is to reach 10% uh, market share uh, in the coming uh, year, for example, this is a strategic goal. So any other goals in any area rather than the financial uh, performance, any other area of the organizational performance, not the financial performance, we call it the strategic goals. The third type of goal, we call it stated goals. What is the stated goals? These are the official statement uh, the organization issues, which says what it wants the various stakeholders uh, to believe its goals are. It might or might not be its real goal. So it, it is the official statement that the organization issues to tell the people these are our goals. So what are the real goals? The real goals are the goals that the organization actually works on, actually pursue, as defined by the actions of its members. So the organization might have real goals that they actually work on and stated goals that they, the, what they want people to believe and what they say to people in, uh, outside the organization or the stakeholders. Moving to the types of plan, as we said, we have eight types of plan, but when we uh, talk about them, you have to de define them according to the breadth. We have strategic and operational. According to the time, we have long and short term. According to specificity, we have directional and specific. And then according to the frequency of use, we have a single use and standing use. So if you have a question asking you, what are the types of plan? First, you have to draw or write this slide. You have to say according to breadth, so and so, according to time, so and so, according to specificity, so and so, according to frequency, so and so. And then we are going to define each one of them. Okay? Breadth means in the plan, a time frame, which is short or long time frame, the time that will be covered, 
specificity, which is it is specific. It gives you the specific details or just give you directions and leave you uh, according to your creativity. And finally, frequency of use, whether you're going to use this pen once or you're going to use it more than once. Uh, starting with the strategic plans, these are the plans that are applied to the entire organization. Just one plan for the whole organization, it establishes the organization overall goals. So it is just one plan for the overall goals of the organization. This is what we call the strategic plan. The operational plans, these are plans made uh, specially for a particular operational area. For example, we have a marketing plan, we have an accounting plan, we have operations plan for the operations manager, and we have a HR plan and so on. So yeah, operational plans, these are plans for a particular operational area inside the organization. But the strategic plan, this is the plan that's applied to the entire or the whole organization. The second uh, division is according to the time frame. We have a long and the short. Long-term plans, these are the plans with the time frame beyond three years, three years or more. And the short term, these are the plans covering one year or less. So um, it might come to your mind now, what about from one to three years? We call it medium term plans, but it is not put inside your book, but we call it medium term plan. Uh, the third division of plans is uh, the specific and directional plan. Specific plans, these are the plans that give you specific details of how you are going to do so and so. So you give you, they give you every single detail of how you are going to, to do each step. These are the plans that are clearly defined and they leave no room for interpretation. They don't give you any room to be creative. They don't leave you any room to just not to understand anything so you interpret it by yourself no every detail is written so this is what we call specific plan the other type is called directional plan directional plan they give you the direction of what we are going to do and it is a flexible plan and leave you to your imagination it give you just guidelines and leave you to do it the way you want here uh, your personality can be uh, shown in the directional plan you can be more creative in doing the directional plan. So specific, they give you full details of how you are going to do the plan. The directional just giving you some guidelines. It is something very flexible and you can be more creative in implementing that plan. The final division is according to the frequency of use. We have a single use plan. These are the plans that are used once to meet the needs of unique situation. Uh, you you faced certain situation. This is the first time you're going to face uh, you face that situation. So uh, you designed specific plan or a single use plan uh, in order to meet that situation. It is a unique situation, of course. The other type is called standing plan. Standing plan means ongoing plan. A plan made that uh, uh, for um, activities that you perform repeatedly so uh, it will provide guidance for you for example when i plan that um, that syllabus it is a standing plan i i planned that syllabus and every year i'm going to do some amendments i'm going to do some modification according to the new version according to the new things that is written but i have already my plan and i'm going to change some uh, small or tiny things according to what's new but i have my own plan uh, going to the approaches to setting goals, first we have the traditional goal setting. The traditional uh, goal setting uh, is an approach to setting goals in which top managers are the ones who set the goal. As uh, everything traditional, traditionally and taqlidi, so traditionally the top managers are the ones who set the goals and then they flow from the top managers downwards and become sub-goals for each organizational area. So when you hear the word traditional, remember that traditionally top managers are the one who set the goals and then it flowed down or broken down into to the uh, other uh, sub goals for each organizational area in the lower levels uh, inside the organization. Uh, the second approach uh, for setting the goals, uh, which we call it mean ends uh, chain, uh, this is integrated network of goals, uh, which means that when you accomplish goals at one level, uh, it, 
is uh, it serves as a mean uh, for achieving the goals uh, or the ends at the next level so it motivates you uh, or it becomes as a step you um, uh, you put your leg on that step to achieve the next level when you reach the goals in the next level it is a step for you to achieve the goals for the third level and so on so it comes from down to up not like the traditional which comes from up to down so it is um, accomplish of goals at one level it is for you it is means for achieving the uh, goals for the next level so when you uh, reach uh, goals at one level these goals take them as a mean to reach the next step for example if you are playing sports and you uh, win the national competition take this as the mean uh, so that you can enter the international competition if you uh, uh, um, uh, win the international competition take this as a step or as a mean to go to the olympics so by uh, achieving one goal at a level it is a mean for you to achieving the higher level and so on the third um, approach which we call it management by objectives this is a, set, uh, um, a process in which the managers along with the employees they sit together and they agree upon the the goals they want to uh, reach uh, and uh, after that they use those goals to evaluate the evaluate the employee performance why they use those goals to uh, evaluate the employee performance because the employees are the ones who agreed upon those goals or upon those objectives and said yes we can do those goals so when you agree on the goals and you said that you are going to do those goals okay we are going to evaluate your performance according to what you you agreed upon regarding the characteristics of a, go a well written goal uh, for a goal to be uh, a good one it has to be written in terms of outcome rather than action what does we mean you have to write I will get a high GPA don't write I will study well so write it in the terms of the outcomes not the actions you are going to do in order to reach your outcome say I will win the first prize or the the first um, uh, rank in the championship don't say I'm going to train well okay so write it in terms of outcome not in actions number two it has to be measurable and quantifiable don't say i want to be i i i cannot say i want to be a good professor what does good mean i want to be a pretty girl what does pretty mean so it has to be measurable and quantifiable i have after some time measure that goal so i have to say i have to be a professor who uh, um uh, who's, uh, for example, students uh, got a high GPA this year, uh, for example, GPA from 3.8 to 4, uh, most of her students got that, so I, ca I have to measure that, okay? Number three, clear as to time frame. You have to say, don't say the organization needs to get uh, profit 10,000 pounds and you uh, stop. 10,000 pounds in a year, in a month, in six months, after 10 years, you have to say it by duration we need to get a profit 10,000 pounds that this month okay so it has to be clear as to time frame after that it has to be challenging yet attainable you have to put to put some challenge to your goal but don't put too high challenge that you cannot attain for example I cannot put a challenge while I'm an old lady uh, that I will go to the Olympics now to win the the gymnastics uh, first uh, place. No, I cannot put that because it is it is not attainable for me. And don't put too low goals that you don't exert much effort. Put something to get the best potential in you. So it has to be challenging, but at the same time it has to be attainable. After that, the goal must be written down and communicated to all the necessary people who are going to work on it. Uh, in order to set a goal, there are five steps you have to follow. First, you have to review the organization mission or purpose. What is meant by mission? The mission is f the reason for the organizational existence. Why we are here? What are we doing? Review what is the real uh, reason for the organization existence. After that, 
Uh, number two, evaluate the available resources. So we all need to be the best. We all need to do very, very, very high goals. But you have to understand what are your resources so that don't put high goals that you cannot achieve. You have to, number two, evaluate the available resources that you can work with. Number three, determine the goals either individually or with input from others. Sometimes or most of the time it's better to uh, determine the goals with uh, input from other people from inside or the outside sometimes from the organization. Number four, write down the goals and communicate them to all who need to know. And number five, review the results and whether the goals are being met. You have to, con to do some controlling to make sure that you uh, 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 achieved your results or not. And if not, what went wrong? Approaches to planning, uh, we have here also the ap traditional approach. In the traditional approach, uh, planning is done entirely by the top manager also. Um, and top management, uh, they are assisted by what we call the formal planning department. So, because it's traditional, as we said before, traditional, so top managers are the ones who are responsible of doing it. But there is uh, what we call formal planning department, they assist the top managers. Formal planning department, these are a group of specialists uh, whose only responsibility is helping to write the plan. They are specialists. Um, came to the organization they have only one thing to do is to write plans inside the organization thank you my dear students uh, we came to end of our chapter uh, hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions just uh, email me